Uh, there's a lot of you here, and we're very grateful that you are. And it's hard to believe we're now in our 13th year uh, of this ceremony. For those that, uh, that I have not met, I'm Bill Lechner, uh, four years retired as the athletic director, uh, the chairperson of this Athletic Hall of Fame still, and currently still the boys' hockey coach. Um, with that said, it's an honor and a pleasure to be uh, able to stand before you and such a distinguished group, so responsible for the rich traditions of Hill, Archbishop Murray, and Hill Murray School. Uh, before we begin our presentation, uh, for the uh, induction of the 2024 class, I will give the floor to Melissa Dan, our president. Good morning. Uh on behalf of Hilmer, I just want to welcome all of you um, and a special welcome to our 2024 inductees to our Athletic Hall of Fame. You know, it's been such an incredible weekend with homecoming, uh, reunions galore. I've seen many of you at other locations this weekend, uh, our homecoming dance last night, and now the culmination of Mass in this ceremony this morning. You know, so I live in an old house in St. Paul, built in 1924. And I hosted a college friend a, a couple weeks ago, and she's like, oh, and she lives in a, you know, beautiful suburban house. And uh, she's like, wow, this house, it's just, it has such good bones. It's just, I mean, look at this, the woodwork. She was just, I, it made me appreciate my house again, uh, because it, it's old, so you know the problems that go along with that. And I was really thinking about that all weekend. I was thinking about Hill Murray has such good bones. Archbishop Murray, Hill High School, now Hill Murray. And it's because um, so many of you who, who have had a part of your story there, you've left a part of your story there, you've been a past student, coach, parent, and we have such good bones because of all of you. So again, uh, congratulations to our inductees, and I'm going to turn it over to Coach Lechner. Uh, on behalf of Hill Murray School, I would like to first welcome and acknowledge our past inductees that were able to attend today. Uh, hopefully we got them all, uh, tried to make sure it was accurate. And um, we'll start with the inaugural class, which was in 2011. And yes, the last couple of years I've needed these. Uh, from the inaugural class of 2011, past inductees, Brother Francis Carr and Terry Skrypek. You can stand, you guys. <laughs> From 2013, Tom Quinlan. From 2015, Les Larson, Andy Persby, and Jim Wold. From 2016, Tom uh, Kinsella, Kinsella, John Heller, and Barry Persby. From 2018, Tom Faust. From 2021, Tessa Sitchi. And from last year, 2023, Denise Shinketh Bates. Right? And Peggy Saracino. <laughs> <There we are. laughs> Sorry, Peg, we tried to grab all of you, so thanks. Impressive group. There was a few people that reached out that want to say congratulations to the new group, to the new inductees uh, that were unable to attend today. Um, I would also like to recognize the Hall of Fame collect, uh, Selection Committee, um, and that's been uh, that creates all this and works that has meetings and that very, uh, very strong behind the scenes. Um, the first one, Aaron Herman, our retired principal and current girls head basketball coach. <laughs> Judy Hilo Schwartz, standing in back there, is our uh, class of 1979 and alumni, <laughs> alumni relations director, and uh, she is a saint and very much a big part of the glue of Hill Murray at this time. Um, 
John Hiller, class of 1964 and a 2016 Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, Vince Conway, a lot of you know or had as a teacher and a coach, class of 71. Uh, he, he had a, a, a surgery and would not be able to be here today. Uh, retired teacher and coach. He's on the committee and a 2021 Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, and then John Pohl, who's not able to be here today, our current activities director and girls hockey, uh, girls hockey coach, and myself. We would also like to welcome our Hill Murray community of students, alumni, friends, and families who are in attendance today. Uh, it's great to see all of you and the, the history that has flowed. And last but not least, welcome the teachers, administrators, and coaches, both past and present, and some that are past and present still. So. So with that said, uh, we'll get right to the uh, ceremony at hand and to the six new inductees. In no pecking order, so here we go. Our first inductee, 40 years as a teacher, 1976 to 2016. Physical science, physical education, biology and health. 49 years plus coaching, meaning he's still coaching. Coach of 40 seasons of cross country, 39 as a head coach. Coached boys cross country to four consecutive state tournaments from 1980 through 1983. Coached 89 teams, 53 as a head coach, 36 as an assistant. Coached 34 seasons as boys and girls track, 10 years as a head coach, 24 years as assistant. 29 boys and girls conference championships, coach of numerous state championships in cross country and track, recipient of multiple Coach of the Year awards. That's all. <laughs> you better keep going. Uh, Mr. Tim Ryan. Maybe a couple oh, what do you got here? Maybe a couple pictures too. But uh, well, I, I want to start, and uh, I'm 72 now, so the the memory isn't so good. So I did write my notes down, and I'll probably take a look at them once in a while. Well, so we'll start with the first group of. So, thank you, Bill. Uh, good morning, pioneers and friends of the pioneers. Before in introducing my family, I want to congratulate each and every one of my classmates. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with five of Hill Murray's finest student athletes of all time. And thanks everyone for coming to support Mark, Michael, Patrick, Rob, Caitlin, and myself. Congrats, Mark. Uh, where is Mark? There he is, and Mark. Before 1975, the only pioneer I knew was Doug Faust, my college cross-country teammate. That, of course, changed in March of 1975 when you, your teammates, and your Hall of Fame coach, Terry Skrypek, introduced me and thousands of Minnesotans to Pioneer Hockey, capital school of hockey ever since, right? Congrats, Michael Roth. I loved watching you dominate that line of scrimmage for your legendary Hall of Fame coach, Steve Fricke. I also loved standing alongside Coach Fricky, watching you toss that shot and disc. Truth be told, Frick always said, no one was as fearless as Michael Roth or Dennis Ryan. So you two are gonna have to work that one out. You know, now they're both in the Hall of Fame, so we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> and one time he told, told us, I think, remember, if they put the two of you in one room, they didn't know which one would come out. So that, and that's a, that's a true story. Congrats, Pat Schaff. Schaff, you, you helped introduce Pioneer Hockey to our oldest sons, Kelly and Corey. They're now Kelly was nine and Corey was seven. And that was during your junior year. Once they saw number three take a few guys out, they were hockey fans of Pioneers for life. Robbie Quinlan. Every chance we got, we loved watching your you play Major League Baseball. But watching you play at Hill Murray and the U of M was 
inspirational for all five of our children. Following in your footsteps, they totaled 20 years of participation in Hill Murray softball and baseball. And you know what else? To have a birthday on St. Patrick's Day is a great day. <laughs> I, congrats, Caitlin langer Simmet. By the time you were dominating the volleyball and basketball courts, our, next, our nest of five had emptied. So what we do on Friday nights, what we did for the last 15 years before that, we head up to Hill Murray to watch whoever's home, either her, her husband or her. And <laughs> speaking of her husband, I actually was his middle school basketball coach, if you can believe it. And, and he's six foot eight. It made me a heck of a basketball coach. We got, we got, we got, we're in, he can only play on the weekends because he played for the ninth grade team. He's six foot eight, eighth grader. So, but on the weekends, he could play with us because Courtney can only do with us playing in the weekend tournament. So we've gotten five tournaments, and believe it or not, as a coach, I'm undefeated <laughs> on the weekend, <laughs> thanks to six foot eight David Simmet. Now the, the family. I'd like to introduce you to some very important people in my life. My beautiful wife, Luann. Could you please stand, Luann? <laughs> 40. Forty-eight years of marriage, and she still kind of likes me. <laughs> Our 15 grandchildren call her Sweet Grandma Lou, and they have an engraved wooden sign they put on our newly remodeled kitchen and ran across the kitchen sink. It says Sweet Grandma Lou's Kitchen, and it sure is. Now, it's been 50 years since our first date, but the love at first sight will never go away. We dated for four months, and as our five children would probably guess, Mr. Patient made his marriage propo proposal. Lucky for them, uh, she said yes. We all know more lucky for me. Trust me when I say Lou is the best thing will ever happen to me. Her contributions to Hillary Cross Country and Track are legendary. Naturally, Bill Lechner has referred to her as St. Lou for as long as I can remember. Lou gave birth to all five of our children in less than nine years. Hence, Lex started referring to us as the uh, rabbit family. <laughs> Lucky for me, our rabbits love to run. So I thoroughly enjoyed coaching all five of them and all 28 seasons. So they did top the baseball and softball, but, just, but that's because Lou brought them up during middle school from St. Pascal's so that I could kind of recruit them into cross country for seventh and eighth grade, then, then we, we had them. See, once we could hook them into that cross country, you can, you can get a lot of people and they'll come with you. Now all five of them are here along with quite a few of their bunnies. Hill Marie 97 grad Kelly Patrick is here. Kelly, can you stand there? Or you, he's video taping. <laughs> and he's, he's got, he's got uh, Graham Patrick and I'm Timothy Patrick and they get, he's age 10 and then Leo Daniel, age nine, they're here. They live in Mount Lake Terrace, Washington, so they came away. Hill Marie 99 grad Corey Michael is here with Caitlin Corey. Hill, there's Corey. Uh, at age uh, 13 is uh, Caitlin Corey, and Nolan Michael at age eight. And Corey Michael's our last state entrant for boys cross country, so he, he made it in 1998. They live right here in Maplewood. The Hillary grad Aaron Marine Ritter is here. Can you please stand, Aaron? <laughs> and she's with her husband, John Gregory Ritter. Uh, their four daughters are all here. Adeline Marine, age 14. Emilise Ann, age 12. Lila Agnes, age 9. Ryan Ireland, age 7. And they reside in Rosemount, Minnesota. Now, Hillary 03 grad Megan Catherine Roach is here. Megan? Class of 03, she has her son Bennett Anthony here. They live in uh, right, right next door here in Charleston, South Carolina. So they made a trip too. And then we got Hillary grad Kyle Robert, 06. And his, he's here, here with his lovely wife, Bo Ivy. And uh, their son, Kenny Robert, age three, keeps them on their toes, no doubt about it. 
Unfortunately, with the rabbit family spread out from Charleston to Seattle, Washington, and parts in between, a few of the rabbits and five of the bunnies could not be here today. Tony, Jenny, and Becky, and uh, Peyton, Deshaun, Maddie, Natalie, and Beckham. I feel their spirit of love, especially today. Our coaches, Sherry Garens, Kevin Streeter, and Molly Schaff are here to support this gray-haired, wrinkled old-timer. So, if they, if those three folks all stand up? Sherry, Kevin, Ke Kevin Streeter. Where is Kevin Streeter? Oh, there he, he moves. Are you, <laughs> he's my new head coach. He moves, and Molly Schaff. There you go, that's Jim Wold's daughter. They're, they're the, the cross-country coaches now and assistants. I had the honor of coaching with Sherry, or t coaching Sherry in cross country and track in the early 1980s. My college teammate, Joe Sweeney, was her coach at the University of St. Thomas in the later 80s. In 1992, this stubborn cross country coach finally realized he could use some help. That's kind of odd that it was 13 years that I was just being the cross country coach by myself and I finally caught on. So this is a good year to, to be the 13th. Uh, so Sherry took on the role as assistant coach in 1992, and in 2017, my last year as head coach, uh, she, she was still my head, uh, assistant coach. So thanks, Sherry, for all you did and meant to cross country those many seasons. Yeah, uh, last track season, head cross country coach Kevin Streeter asked me if I would like to join him and assistant coach Molly Schaff as an assistant coach. Uh, didn't take me very long to answer. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience this season. Thank you, Kevin and Molly, for inviting me in. I might not leave. No, that's the problem with me. <laughs> You're both doing such a great job with cross country, and I'm just so proud to assist you. And uh, we're hoping for a quad fet today. So, uh, Lady Queen of Victory, pray for us. So, homecoming, Hill Murray 38, South St. Paul 7. Homecoming U of St. Thomas, that's where I went, 34, Stetson 24 yesterday. And of course, the U of M 24, USC 17. First time the Gophers beat USC since 1955, the year my younger brother was born. The younger brother was born in 1955. <laughs> that's the last time the Gophers did. Now, we've got the Vikes. That would be the quad feta. And I heard a rumor that they might be ahead, but that's all I know. So then we got um, we got to go to page three. So you, it's uh, not much longer, but we got uh, 49 years, folks. I got a lot of people. Back in June at the alumni pickleball tournament, Bill Lechner and his beautiful beautiful wife Sue quietly told me the Hall of Fame committee decided I was going in as a coach. And now the shock has yet to wear off, but you can see it's starting to wear off just a little bit because I've been looking for October 6th for a while and. It, it, it is a shock. He also told me to come prepared with a, th a ton of thank yous. So first off, thank you Bill, Aaron, John Heller, John Pohl, Vince, and Judy. She's always in the background, but there she is, Judy Hilo Schwartz, for your tireless efforts as members of the Hill Murray Hall of Fame Committee. Countless pioneers that I can think of could easily be standing right here. I won't name names, but two of them our original members of the Hill Murray Hall of Fame Committee. So we hope we will see them soon. Uh, being inducted today is an honor I will cherish the rest of my life. How I got here is easy. I have the good fortune to coach many of Hill Murray's best athletes and live into my 70s. After 49 school years, I owe a debt of gratitude to countless wonderful people. Starting with my very first role models back in 1952, and now my very favorite guardian angels, the past two decades, my amazing parents, Bob and Rita Ryan. Both of them were born in 1927. World War II vet, Navy vet, Bob, and my beautiful mother were married on November 24th, 1948. Over the course of their 53 years of marriage, they raised nine children. Starting in 1973, they love to spoil each and every one of their 15 grandchildren. I'm honored to have 15, same as my parents. They always found the time to make 
each family member feel loved and appreciated. The family values they instilled in me are the greatest give I've, gift I've ever received. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I gotta get a drink of my water here. Right here. Where did I put my water? Sorry about that, folks, but the lungs get a little dry. Again, I can keep blaming the 49 years, right? Is that you guys I still haven't put anybody to sleep? I'm trying my best. A debt of gratitude goes out to my high school and college coaches. I learned the value of preparation from Dick Benepe and Bob Ryan. They were my wrestling coaches, as well as Jerry Larson, my high school cross country and track coach. My college coach, Dr. Larry Russ, echoed the same sentiment, but he added, always expect the unexpected. Doc Russ loved Hill Murray and recruited many of our distance athletes whom Doc told me always stood out from the crowd. And that's why I brought one of these pictures along. Our kids are st standing out from the crowd, and I got the wrong picture out. This is a nice one, though. This is the first. <laughs> it's from the same team, but that's before the, that's the day before the meet. The actual meet, and Jimmy Errett's in that picture. But in this picture, we got the team right here, the very first team to go to state public school state, and in there we got uh, Tom Faust, Steve, uh, Kevin Connors, Steve Kircher, Jim Ferletti, John Travisky, Mark Wacker, and Paul Thermos, and then Ann Klein was all state for girls that year. And Ann was, her parents were sharp, they took the picture, because I was a rookie, kind of a rookie, I didn't even think of that kind of thing, but it's unbelievable. But you see there's a little guy walking right behind there, that's Dr. Larry Russ. And he was already recruiting Tom and, Ter and, Tom and uh, Paul. And they went on to win national championships in cross country. And those guys were both all Americans. So our pioneers did well once they got away from us. So 23. Getting my first teaching job was quite an adventure. But thanks to my grade school classmate, Valerie Gian, who's here today, can you believe it? She married a guy named Terry Skrypek. And her husband, Terry Skrypek, Val's dad, Jim Gian, and Jim's good friend, Bob Ryan, I had a shot at a job. When a Hillmary science opening happened in mid-August of 1976, the word to get my resume into Hill Murray was relayed to me at my construction work site. No cell phones, dial phones did the job, rotary dial. Interviewing with 1976 administration of Frank Ashenbrenner, Jim Rollick, sister Pat Collins, Jim Johnson, brother Martin Selner, and brother Francis Carr was an awesome experience. My heartfelt gratitude goes out to those six giants of Hill Murray for taking a chance on a 24-year-old newlywed looking for his first, and as it turned out, his last job, teaching job. Thanks to Hall of Famers Jim Wold and Brother Francis Carr. Jim was the head track coach, and he's here today, and he, he uh, asked me if I'd like to be that distance coach. He encouraged me to read coaching books and always be open for change. That correct, Jim? And for sure. Thanks also to Brother Francis who's sitting right with Jim. He hired me as the cross country coach in 1979. Brother is an amazing inspiration to anyone who knows him. And a shout out up above to athletic director Steve Fricky. In 1986, he hired me as the head track coach. And I really would like to acknowledge and thank my many athletic directors, including Brother Francis Carr, Steve Fricky, Jim Rollick, Aaron Herman is here, Aaron right over here, uh, Bill Lechner, and John Pohl. These tremendous leaders have been the backbone of Hill and Hill Marie Athletics for the past 60 school years. The first 19 of those Brother Francis set a pretty high bar. And as everyone knows, Steve, Jim, Aaron, Bill, and John kept it high for the past 41 years. Page four. All right. <laughs> 
I'd also want to acknowledge and thank my very talented assistant coaches. Uh, it was pretty much stress-free. Thanks to Paul Otto, Steve Fricke, Bob Reese, Brian Gary, Paul Mengi, Linda Jones, Scott Daniger, Aaron Herman, Bob Schwartz, Tom Rodefeld, Patty Cousins, Jerm Smith, Mike Mackley, Sherry Gerens, Nick Andrea, Rebecca Frank, Megan Hayes, Harris, and Kelly Wakeham. As assistant coaches, I, obviously I wouldn't be standing here without those folks, so it was amazing. And also a shout out to my eight head track coaches that I had the great fortune to assist, including Jim Wold, Steve Fricke, Jeff Lukens, Tom Rodefeld, Chris Dollinger, John Patterson, Jody Hurley, and currently Olivia Rodriguez. I did have two non-cross-country track memories I'd like to mention that happened in 1992. During the track season, from mid-April to the end of the school year, my 64-year-old dad, Bob Ryan, came out of retirement to be a six-week long-term sub for our health teacher, Bob Schwartz, who had just gotten a job and they made him head on down to the fire department. It was fun going to faculty meetings and teacher celebrations with my dad. Bob Schwartz would be here today, but he's looking forward to becoming a grandpa tomorrow out in California. So his daughters do, and our daughter Erin used to be her babysitter. During the fall of 1992, then Steve Fricke heard what a good job my dad had done with Bob Schwartz's class. He hired him as the freshman football coach. Andy Persby's here, and Andy Persby was his quarterback. And I was excited just a little bit heading to practice every day. We actually stretched out right here. This used to be an open ground right here. We stretched, and the football was right over there where the softball field is, so I could see my dad coaching it every day. It was, it was a great, great year. Uh, I had another thing, but it's, it's, it pretty much tells what it's like to be a, a distance runner. And I don't know if there's a lot of distance runners here, but Lou says, don't tell them about it. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> so, as you might well know, imagine, I have a thousand precious memories from my 49 years of coaching here at Hillmarie. A slightly painful and joyful one happened early in my sixth school year of coaching, cross country and track. The valuable lesson I learned on September 25th, 1982 has guided, guided me ever since. That was of course Corey's second birthday. Lou drove Corey and Kelly, he was a three, drove them all the way up to Princeton to witness this event. Never bet against the pioneers in any sport. It was the 1982 Princeton Invitational. A couple of guys uh, remember this. The bet was simple. I bet the team they could not win the meet. And if, I, if they did, I had to run the coaches, old timers, which they had 19 year olds in, two mile race after the meet. 18 school field was loaded, no, no problem, right? Of course they won the meet by 26 points. So now the fun began for the team. One of them carbon copied my coaching apparel, complete with the Hilmary hat, the clipboard and the stopwatch. My athletes chased and cheered for me all over the Princeton golf course that sunny day. Of course, they recorded my splits. Proud to say I had six minutes and six minutes. Uh, I hacked and coughed the entire bus ride home. <laughs> Life lesson learned, never bet against the pioneers. When I reminisce about the past, I, 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 know, it's, I know I'm taking too long, but after 49 years, what do you do, right? There's the picture to prove that I ran that. <laughs> they, they took a picture and made a calendar and gave it to me at the banquet. So they, they, they were happy to put me on that course and they, they recorded it. Now when I reminisce about the past 49 school years, a thought I had in year one remains unchanged. Coaching at Hill Murray is an honor and a privilege. I consider every Hill Murray athlete I ever had the good fortune to coach as part of my coaching family. I would love to personally acknowledge and thank every one of them. So, but there's just not enough time. <laughs> so, not, not, almost, almost, almost finished, but, so I did get all the, all the records of all the teams and I read every one of their names because it's definitely the thing for me to do at this time. 
Knowing that I've had the honor and the privilege of helping these great student athletes grow and mature into outstanding citizens is something I have coveted since 1976. Hill Murray has always been such a special place because few, if any, can match our student athletes drive, discipline, determination, dedication, and desire. Because of their efforts, I will always enjoy the journey. In, in the memory of my newest guardian angel, Beckham Ace Roach, I proudly join the class. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I'd tell you a couple stories, but I think you, I think you got it covered. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Our, sec our second inductee, 1975 graduate of Hillmary High School, three-year varsity letter winner in soccer, senior year captain, senior year all-conference, four-year letter winner in hockey, junior and senior year all-conference, senior year captain, participant in all four years of the state tournament three years independent and one year public and private. Member of the third place state tournament team senior year, three year varsity letter winner in baseball, senior year all conference, attended college at RPI, two year participant in hockey. Our next inductee, Mark Klosner. Tough act to follow. I don't have as many notes, so probably won't be as long. Uh, first of all, thanks, Coach Lechner and the committee, Hall of Fame committee. Very honored to be here. A little unexpected. Um, when Bill first called back in May, I think it was, didn't get his call, left a message, Mark, can you give me a quick call back? And I'm wondering, what, what does he want? I helped him with the resales for I think it was nine years and I'm thinking did somebody quit and he's looking for help with that <laughs> I literally had no idea that this was coming and I'm very honored uh, I did talk to Bill and the first thing he said was I'm gonna need some help with the resales this year <laughs> so anyway um, I want to congratulate congratulate all the other inductees um, I'm honored to be in a group with you folks. Um, a couple of you I know very well. Um, Rob Quinlan kind of grew up in our front yard with our son Rick and the rest of our little kids. Um, so Rob, Rob has always been a big part of our family. Uh, Coach Schaff, um, one of the longest and most tender embraces I think I've ever witnessed was after they lost the state tournament game. One of my sons was participating um, on the ice, coach was out there, and my son went over and gave him a hug, and I literally almost cried. It was so tender. Pat, tremendous human being. Um, thanks for all you did for our family. Um, it was very nice. Mr. Roth here, like Tim was saying, um, you wouldn't want to meet that man on a football field, but I can assure you he's a great human being and a really nice person. I got a chance to meet Caitlin Friday night um, at the football game, and I don't want to say I was pleasantly surprised. I was super surprised at how nice she was and how inviting she was. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful person. I don't know much about your sports because I was long gone by then. So anyway, um, in 1970, I thought my life was over. We were moving to the Twin Cities from Cloquet. I had 10 super close friends in my neighborhood. 
and I was riding in the back of our station wagon as we rolled down um, I-35 toward the Twin Cities, and I thought, you know, you're just approaching a teenager. Um, how am I ever going to make friends? This is it. My life is done. They don't play hockey down in the Twin Cities. They only play it up in the north part of the, country, um, the state. Uh, little did I know the group and the friends and the connections that I would make. Um, there was a group at St. Peter's when I got down here that welcomed me into their group. Um, and in six months, I literally forgot where I came from and I became part of the community down here. So I know some of them are here right now. I appreciate you folks so much for being kind. I was a very shy um, young man at that time. And I was so fortunate to become friends with the folks that I did. My parents even approved of you folks, so <laughs> that was good. Uh, my path to Hill Murray um, started when I entered seventh grade, the year I moved down here. My mom was a elementary school teacher, got a job at Eagle Point Elementary School. Her teaching mate at the school was a gal by the name of Patty Johnson. And as many of you know, that's uh, Jim Johnson's wife. And I think they immediately started working my parents over to try and guide this troubled youth to a good Catholic education at, at Hill Murray. And it worked. Um, I was happy to be uh, entering the school in ninth grade. Um, coming into Hill Murray as a freshman can be very intimidating. The best part about it was that as we came into the school in ninth grade, it was the first year that Hill Murray was a combined school. Hill and Archbishop Murray had merged. So that meant the seniors in our school were as new to the classrooms and the teachers and the hallways as we were. So they didn't intimidate us. We were all trying to find our way through the school at the same time. Over 1,400 students entered Hill Murray at that year. The campus was probably maybe two-thirds of what it is today. Can you imagine what it was like walking those hallways with 1,400 other students? It was uh, a cattle drive in between every class, and you strategically had to plan how many books you were going to bring, which classes you could get back to your locker and over to your new classroom. So it was a challenge, definitely a challenge, but uh, very heartwarming. And from the get-go, I loved Hill Murray. Um, we also were fortunate enough, um, I'm going to mention some of the people that were influential to me, um, and they weren't maybe associated with athletics, but uh, my favorite teacher of all time is here today. And I'm talking about grade school, high school, college, is Brother Arnold. Uh, just a tremendous man. I love that man dearly. He always was so good to me. Uh, plus, he was a tremendous teacher. Uh, Brother Martin, also a good friend of mine. Um, I wish I could greet him here too, uh, but I've seen him quite a bit in the past, not recently, but another wonderful man. We were so blessed to have the Christian brothers and the Benedictine nuns helping create us, form us. What a benefit to all of us that was. Uh, Brother Francis Carr, athletic director, friend, head of laundry, literally told us, if you take your hockey jersey home and you wash it, you are fired. <laughs> Brother washed every single jersey for us after every game, and I don't know how he got that all done with all the other things he had to do, but uh, just a, a wonderful person. Um, the coaches that I had, tremendous people, um, again, helped molding and crafting all of us. Andre Ballou, um, you can have your hound's tooth hat guy. Andre was the most creative and wonderful coach, I think one of them that I've ever played for. Um, I'll give you an example of his being innovative. Um, we had a scrimmage over at Burnsville, and back then they weren't, they were just becoming a powerhouse. Uh, kind of a suburban group that had started to grow, had a good youth base, um, big team, monster team, mean, tough, 
And we had lost a good group of seniors the year before. This is when we were sophomores. Um, this scrimmage ended up, we were tied two to two. Their coach was at Burnsville. Their coach said, let's settle this with a penalty shot. And Andre just kind of smiled and he said, sure, we can do that. And he looked over, we had a sophomore named Rick Beldy back then, um, just a tremendous young hockey player. I wish he could have stayed with us. He moved on to juniors after his sophomore year. Uh, Andre looked at Rick and he said, why don't you go out there and play goalie? And Rick kind of looked, we all looked, what are you thinking? We have Steve Janisak right here. <laughs> and Andre just kind of laughed and he said, Rick goes, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, stop the puck. So he put Rick in the goal. They put their best forward out. They blow a whistle. And Rick comes out, challenges them, blocks the shot. Um, he proceeds, Ballou then proceeded to tell Rick, okay, go ahead, you can take the shot. And Rick um, completely undressed their goaltender. And we all just laughed and walked off. And it's like, are you kidding me? Uh, so nice, nice little story, um, which leads me to some of the teammates I got to play with. Uh, Dick Spambauer was kind of my mentor. I was a ninth grader. Dick was a six foot two, 220 pound senior who I think had already committed to the University of Minnesota. And he probably looked down and said, I have to play with a ninth grader? Are you kidding me? But he didn't do that. He grabbed me and he said, come on, we're going to get through this together. Uh, what a mentor, what a great human being. Uh, Dick passed away a few months back, but always just such a gracious, gentle giant. Super. Uh, Dave Longman was on that team, another four Stanley Cup ring uh, senior. Um, can you imagine two seniors of that caliber having to play defense with two freshmen? And it was pretty incredible for those guys to take us in like they did. Uh, but we had the Whistlers, the Regans, Steve Janicek I mentioned, Rod Romanchuk, uh, Mark Sheik, who's a very close friend of mine who passed away about 10 years after high school, and we miss him dearly. Uh, but the Conroys, the Longevin, Beldies, Davis, just how can you not be successful when you're surrounded by such a great group? Um, I don't have a lot else I really want to say except I have another coach I want to recognize, and that's Terry Skrypek. And I want to recognize him, of course, but his wife. I know a big thing in, in sports these days is having carbo loading or pasta feeds. And we were seniors. Terry came on and coached us uh, after Andre left after our sophomore year. So for two years, he was new coaching, new to coaching. We were, you know, just high school kids. Um, but Terry found a way to ingratiate himself with us. He was always willing to share. Um, he would look for ideas, but he always had a plan. He always had a good plan for us, and we appreciated that. Probably the first pasta feed ever was when Coach Skrypek invited us to his apartment, which was right over here, and Val was there. And I don't believe that they were even engaged yet. And I don't know how he had the nerve to do this, but Terry invited the seniors to come over for dinner that night to his place, and Val cooked this incredible Italian dinner. It was the best, and as you can imagine, some high school kids can eat. Uh, I think we cleaned them out that night. They were so gracious about that. I'll never forget that, Val, the first time I met you. Um, Terry's a lucky man, and we were extremely fortunate to have Terry for a coach. Uh, I don't know if he thought so much of us or he just needed the money, but he volunteered to coach baseball too. Um, and I would say he was a more intense baseball coach than he was a hockey coach. Um, so thank you again, Terry. We appreciate it. Um, you were a huge part of our life, and I, I dearly appreciate you. So um, I'll just close with a couple of thoughts here. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> my family's all here. I met my wife when I was a junior in high school and Barb was a sophomore in, at Hill Murray. And probably the best day of my life. Um, she stood by my side through many different things. Um, we have five wonderful children, all of whom who graduated from Hill Murray. I'm not gonna name them all. Um, and we also have 14 grandchildren. So we're extremely proud. But what that tells me is that Hill Murray, from the time I was in ninth grade, has influenced every single day of my life one way or another, 
through this group of people that I met. I said I was going to miss the 10 friends I left in Cloquet when we moved down here. But now I see the group of not only friends, but fellow students, teachers. The group from Hill Murray is so supportive. If you ever need help with anything, there's always somebody here that you can count on. So with that, I would like to just say um, I miss my parents. They were Hill Murray through and through. I wish they could have been here. This would have been a very proud moment for them too. So thank you everyone, I appreciate it. He wants to make fun of my picture. No, I don't. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> this was 1975. Long hair was in. <laughs> of course, we had a dress code. Um, I forgot to show you one picture I had here, too. I'm going to show you real quick. Um, I did get my hair cut before class started because I knew Brother Francis would be all over me. I forgot to mention one coach that was super important to me. This is a picture of our, pay no attention to these guys over here. This is our soccer coach at Hill Murray right here. And I wish Father John was still here. This is Father John Higgins. He was the priest at Hill Murray at the time. Somebody, I think Tom, you asked me, did they have soccer back when you were in high school? Um, they did. It was just starting. We needed a coach. Father John volunteered. His famous saying, his coaching style was, kick the ball, kick it. And that's his coaching style right there. I'm sorry I forgot to mention him. It's a great picture. If you want to come and look at Father John, the field out behind us was named Higgins Memorial Field. I don't know if it still is. Father John's um, mother passed away and left him some money, and he donated all that money to the field and helped build that field and get it started. So, Father John, I'm sorry I missed you. Um, thank you all. Uh, by the way, Mark, we still wash the hockey uniforms ourselves. <laughs> we, don't, we don't trust the kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> Our next inductee, 1985 graduate of Hillmarie High School, four years varsity football letter winner, started every varsity game all four years, two years co-captain, three years all-conference, senior year all-state strength team, three years MVP as defensive player of the year, four years varsity hockey letter winner, two years all-conference, three-year participant in AA, the double state uh, boys hockey tournament, member of the 1983-28-0 state championship team, senior team, Minnesota all-star team, maroon and gold. It's an all-star team after the season. Three years varsity letter winner in track, college scholarship to New Hampshire for hockey, three years participant, drafted by the New Jersey Devils after junior year in 1984. My pleasure, Mike Roth. It's, uh, it's great to be here. I'm going to um, try and keep it short because I'm hungry. <laughs> I, li I like food. Um, yeah, so let's get the, um, well, first of all, get the thank yous out of the way. I want to thank my parents who are here, mom and dad. I, w I wouldn't be here without <laughs> Um. Dad and I used to always have what we called the post-game show after a youth hockey game or something, so we had all those memories. And my mom was instrumental in youth hockey. She, uh, I think, organized the first mom's son's game. <laughs> and that went well until somebody broke their nose. <laughs> um, I want to recognize my kids, or first my wife, Beth, my better three quarters, and um, my kids Drake and his wife Ashley, um, Olivia, Natalie, I, and I forgot my sister and her um, husband Carl. 
So, um, again, it's, um, it's just an amazing um, opportunity. I, I, when you look at the, um, you know, the, the storied histories of, of, storied history of the athletes and coaches at Hill, um, to be cons even considered for this is, is a huge honor, and um, I'm humbled. I, d I don't know what else to say. Um, and I'd also like to congratulate the uh, inductees uh, for this, this year's class. I'd, um, I, if I could go back in time, I'd probably come back and run cross country for Coach Ryan. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry, I got lots to go over. When Lex first, and, and I want to also point out Rob Quinn, on the last time I saw Robbie, he was on my shoulders <laughs> after we had the homecoming from the state tournament in 1985. And I've got that picture somewhere, I just can't, I couldn't find it. Um, so, of course, I was honored when Coach Lechner called me and I said yes and I accept and I also asked him if there was a cash prize. <laughs> and what I, where's Chris? What I found out from Chris was I had it backwards. The cash prize isn't for me, it's for Hill Murray. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll be going into negotiations later. Um, so a huge uh, thank you to the school. Um, uh, for putting this event on. I uh, want to thank, um, like everybody else, um, and if I miss somebody, I'm, I apologize, but Coach Lechner, um, President um, Melissa Dan, John Pohl, um, Judy Schwartz, um, all the, the former coaches, uh, all my teammates, assistant coaches, current, former, um, teachers, students, fan, uh, fans, um, also members of the Hammer family. Um, and um, also, let's not forget, uh, he's in a class by himself, Brother Francis. He is the, um, I call him the Swiss Army Knife of Hill Murray, because he did it all. Um, I also want to thank um, Coach uh, Fricky and um, Coach Skrypek for giving me an opportunity um, Coach Fricky had a interesting way when he called your name he'd say your full name Michael Roth and if you said anything he would say what did I stutter or your ears flap shut that was his <laughs> That, that was his uh, line, and you never ever wanted to say, if your first word was I thought. You, you learn very quickly, you'd never say I thought, because he'd say, well, that's your first mistake, you, you were thinking. <laughs> so, um, and Coach Skrypek, brilliant hockey coach, he was, um, sorry. An amazing coach who um, he helped us understand that what we were playing for um, in the present day, we were we were really playing for memories tomorrow, and there isn't a day that goes by where I don't think of Hill Murray or something that brings me back a memory, uh, something that happened, a place. Um, but Coach Skrypek, you really drilled into us that no one has, is ever going to take these memories away from you. And what you realize when you get older is that um, that's what we were playing for back then. We just didn't know it. Um, oh, wow. I have... Um, <clears throat> Two other people I'd like to thank. Um, my grade school, I had a grade school um, teacher who in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade would, um, he let us, if you can imagine in this day and age, or back then, um, you would never be able to do this, but he, um, 
he had us play, you couldn't play tackle football in White Bear Lake until you were eighth grade. But in fourth grade, he said, as long as you got a helmet, I will take you out. He was all-time quarterback, so he played quarterback on either side. We played tackle football. All you needed was a helmet. And we would wear jerseys so we didn't rip up our clothes. We wore cleats. We would play from the fall all the way through winter, and we played tackle football. And let me tell you, that's where um, a lot of great football players, that's where we learned our you know, that, that was the, the way we learned how to play, and um, you would never see that today. Also want to thank Moose Younghands, um, who was my uh, first football coach. Um, Moose had a, um, um, and I figured this out after, but every week when we played, I played for Johnson area, uh, grew up on the east side, actually, a lot of people don't know that, we lived on Clarence in Nebraska. Um, but I played for Johnson area because, again, you couldn't play tackle football in White Bear. So my dad would drive me in, um, and that's where I started playing. And, boy, I was, uh, what a lesson. We were playing with some big boys um, at that time. But Moose, uh, I figured this out after. He had this little thing where he would have a motivation every week. And so he'd come in and say, well, you know, I was having lunch today, and um, this guy came up and said that your team is just a worthless bunch of, you know, he always had that. Every week it was something different. He was either at lunch or he was at work, or he had that motivation, and we would just go crazy. I know Schwarty knows Moose, so um, anyway. Uh, the memories I have, um, like I said, there isn't a day that goes by where I don't think of something. My wife, it kind of drives her crazy. <laughs> And um, she really struggles with the, uh, the nicknames, okay? She's like, who, you know, who is Scooter? Who is Heffy? Who is Stiffy? Who is Borny? Who is, she just, yeah, she's just, she is like, who are you talking to now? <laughs> um, and I also want to give a special award to my sister for, uh, we had some pretty tough rides in the morning on the way to school especially after a loss or uh, maybe I didn't play too well, but, um, and, um, yeah, so I, I apologize. <laughs> but she had it pretty easy because no one would go out with her because they were all terrified of me, so. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh, okay, I'm, get, I'm getting closer. It's very disjointed, I'm sorry. Um, very hard. Um, of course, I think Melissa Dan uh, mentioned bones. When we were in the huddle, we used to say break bones instead of just break when we broke the huddle. So, and that's what we did. We broke bones. So that kind of took me back. We would say break bones. You probably get a penalty for it today for unsportsmanlike comments or something. Um, I, uh, Coach Lechner, um, the, the 83 team, 28-0, um, as Coach Skrypek said, we were 28-0, and we didn't lose a scrimmage that year. There's a lot of scrimmaging that goes on. We never lost a scrimmage. We never lost anything. And, um, of course, there is the John Marshall game, which was the last regular season game. I don't know if you've heard the story, but... We kind of ran into a buzzsaw. It was, uh, we were 20, uh, we hadn't been beaten, and um, we, uh, we got jumped pretty, pretty bad. It was not looking good, and we, I think we scored a goal. Uh, it was 7-3 going into the, I mean, it was 7-3 going into the third period, and um, I like to say that it was, when we went in the locker room, uh, coach never said anything. It was the greatest speech never given. <laughs> and what we heard through the, the duck work was, there's no way these guys are going to beat us. There's no way. We got them. You could hear them in the locker room. And nobody said a word. We, we knew what we had to do. We came back and won 8 to 7 in overtime. Um, I also, uh, the... Uh, the 85 team is always special because we were, 
we were not a very good team that year, my senior year, and we really struggled. But at the end of the year, um, we just kind of came together and we, we made it to the state tournament. And of course, we, that year they had Hibbing was already had their name inscribed on the state championship trophy. And we beat them in the first, we drew them first and uh, we beat them in overtime. And my favorite memory of that game is I remember the goalie after uh, Nick scored, Nick Jeremy scored the, the overtime goal. The goalie, John Hyduke, he, he just immediately went to the locker room. He didn't shake hands. He was just out of there. Um, so that team is really special just because um, we really struggled throughout the year. And then we ended up in the state title game. So... Um, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, it just, it's hard, but I love my time at Hill Murray. And uh, thank you, I accept. Uh, Beth, if anybody's calling for Mike and they say, is Mongo there? That was his nickname. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just to let you know. <laughs> okay. Our uh, next inductee, 1995 Hill Murray School graduate. Four years boys hockey, two years JV, two years varsity letter winner. Four years baseball, three years varsity letter winner. Junior and senior year, all conference. Junior and senior year, all metro. Junior, all state honorable mention. Senior, all state. Senior, Gatorade player of the year. Scholarship to University of Minnesota, four years for baseball. First year, senior year, all big 10 player of the year. Drafted by the Anaheim Angels. 10th uh, college player picked. Player of the year in uh, single, a, uh, single A baseball. First year, 21 game hitting streak. All star team in high double A. Uh, second year, all-star team in the AA third year, AAA player of the year in 2002, professional team career from 2003 to 2010, all with the Anaheim Angels, Rob Quinlan. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, thanks to the, to the committee and uh, Coach Lechner. Um, when I was, uh, my first kind of introduction to Hill Murray sports was uh, when I was eight year old little bat boy and I was uh, being the bat boy for my brothers, Tom and Craig, who were at Hill Murray. And uh, I don't remember much about that year at all, but uh, one game I do remember quite well and uh, it still hurts me to talk about it, but I was uh, running out to get one of the bats after one of the guys got a hit and somehow I got in the way of uh, one of the guys swinging a bat and I got hit right in the back of the head and knocked out right on the, on the ground. And uh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't feel good one bit, but uh, when I came to after a few minutes and uh, some of the players were very nice saying, wow, you really hit the ground hard there. Or, that, you must have a really hard head. That sounded really loud. And uh, Coach Lechner to this day was always said, well, I guess I'm getting fired after this game and that's gonna be it. But uh, thank God they never did that. And, and uh, thank God that you've been a part of Hill Murray for all these years and what you've done for our family and this community and for so many student athletes and for the hockey program has just been really great. So thank you. I'd like to thank all the people that are, uh, also went in with me. So, um, it's a great honor to be a part of all this group, this group here. Um, actually, I have a connection to everyone here. I didn't know Caitlin, but uh, it was very nice meeting you the other night and got to coach through a shaft way back in the day. And, Mr. Ryan was a, co was a teacher coach here forever. I knew him. Rother, and still need to see that picture that you got. He, uh, he offered me the other night to uh, get on his back and recreate it. <laughs> and uh, I said, I don't think that's going to work for either one of us. <laughs> I 
And then Mark, um, like you said earlier, like grew up in your house. You were such a great supporter of mine. Your whole family was. So thank you very much. Proud of all you guys. Got a chance to play hockey here and baseball as well. And uh, just was very fortunate to uh, play with a lot of good, great players. Um, unfortunately, we never made any state tournaments or anything like that. But always had really good teams, played with really good teammates. A couple of them are here today. Andy Persby, my best friends here. Uh, Rick Klausner, Ryan Beerworth. Um, some of those guys that I just had so much fun playing with, but we also had so much fun outside of sports. And that's kind of what you remember. It's not always about the games, but it's about uh, being outside of the, the games and, and enjoying your time. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, some of the staff that worked here, that I really appreciate it. Uh, Coach Fricky didn't actually play for him, but he was uh, very in instrumental in having my back. Mr. Lechner, Mr. Ryan, uh, Barry Perkins. Uh, Aaron Herman, um, Miss Bush, I see that you're here as well, one of my favorite teachers here at Hill Murray, so thank you so much. So yeah, I just really enjoyed my time here at Hill Murray, I think as all of us did, as Rother just said, it's a, it was a great time of all of our lives and we really enjoyed being here. Wanted to thank my, uh, my brothers for coming out, um, my two older brothers kind of were the ones that uh, I looked up to growing up, they really pushed me. and. Um, just thank you so much for being here. You always would tag me, let me tag along wherever we would go. And uh, thank you so much for, for doing that. Um, thank you also for making me the baseball player that I was. They used to take tennis balls and sh purposely shoot them at me when I was trying to play goalie. And uh, I used to go watch all their games and they'd score all these goals on the sides of the net. But when they would play with me in the driveway, they'd shoot balls right at my head and my chest. <laughs> so thank you so much because actually, one day I figured, I'm like, you know what, I think they're doing this on purpose, so I'm going to put a helmet on it, and uh, that's when I got a glove out, and that's where I started to learn how to catch, and, and uh, so thank you for, uh, for doing that for me. It really benefited me. <laughs> so just want to thank my, my mom. She's uh, passed away. She's not here today, but uh, she was the rock of our family, and, and uh, as everyone here, as my dad's here, everyone knows that she was, uh, she was a, the head of our family, and she's deeply missed, and we wish we, she was here. And to my dad, thank you so much for, for everything growing up. I mean, you really pushed us. You really were a great father. Um, some of the best times of my life were when my older brothers actually left the house and me and my dad would just go to the park and play tennis. We would play basketball in the driveway. And it was very competitive. And uh, he was a very good athlete and he'll still tell you today he is. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, because it, it really was some of the best times and that's really what pushed me. So, and then thank you just to the Hill Murray community. Got a chance to go to the football game here the other night, and I hadn't been here in a while, but it's just really impressive how many people come out, how many people uh, support Hill Murray, and uh, how many people throughout my whole career have supported me and uh, had my back that when I didn't even know they were, they were cheering and stuff like that. So thank you for everybody. I'll gladly accept going in this year, and uh, thank you very much. Quick things that I think you uh, uh, would kind of like. When I asked these guys, obviously I've known the Quinlans a long time and coached with these guys, um, his brothers. Um, when uh, I asked where were you playing these games where you're whipping tennis balls at each other, and I think, mister, you would attest to it, and you're a saint, Tom. It was in their living room. <laughs> it's like, oh my, true sometimes? Yeah. You know, they have outdoors and garages and things like that, but anyway. Uh, the other one, I'll go super quick. Um, I was the coach then uh, when Robbie was our bat boy and Tommy and Craig were playing for us. And this happened and I saw it and it's like, oh no. You know, where's my insurance card? Do I need a lawyer? I thought, this is bad, okay? Anyway, and I see Mr. Quinlan, Tom, coming running through the gate down here on the field. And I go, oh boy. And I was competitive against him. I played with, with and against Tom in sports through the years. So anyway, I thought this is bad. And he avoided right me and went up to Robbie and said, what are you doing getting in the way? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I love that parent. That's <laughs> so, anyway.
Congrats, Rob. Our next inductee, 1989 graduate of Hill Murray High School, participant in three years soccer, varsity letters, junior and senior years, four year participant in participant hockey, three years varsity letter winner, three years all conference, two years all metro, senior year all state, select 16s for the national team participant, senior year team Minnesota, all star team, maroon and gold, again after the season it's an all star team. College scholarship to Boston College for hockey. Two-year participant before turning professional. Professional career in the Swiss Elite League. Five years finishing career with Club Lugano. 25 years as assistant boys varsity hockey coach, 1997 to 2022. On a special note, he was my co-coach. He's unbelievable and a brother to me. Multiple assistant, I'm not crying, Chef. Multiple. <laughs> Multiple assistant coaching awards, including conference, section, and state tournament championships. Uh, Pat Schaffhauser. I'll try not, to do, try not to drop it. I thought I was going to be doing okay here, but Rother, you kind of got me. <laughs> when you started talking about your relationship with Scry. Um, first and foremost, I have to say thank you. Uh, my, uh, my family's here. My wife Angie's here. My brother and nieces and my sister who came up to and surprised me today. It's, it means the world to me uh, to see you all here. I really appreciate it. I was uh, thinking about some things here as I was getting closer to this day, and it's, it's really unlike me. I don't, I don't typically look back and dwell on too many things. And uh, receiving this honor, uh, it kind of brought me back a little bit, and I realized just truly how much this place meant to me, and still does. I, uh, I don't always understand or know why the life takes you down to the different roads that it does. Whether it's by choice, whether it's by circumstance, sometimes it's by both, I suppose. But the things I learned here were the things that stuck with me forever. I know when, uh, when I was little, I would come to all the hockey games. I watch, as I was growing up, I wanted to be Rother. He, he was, I thought he was the greatest hockey player out there. It was just the style he played and the, and the, the teams that they had. And I remember as I got older and I, able, I was able to uh, come to Hill Murray and I tried out for the team and as a sophomore I made varsity and Coach Skrypeck was the coach. And we were gonna have our first meeting. And I thought, all right, here it is. I'm, I'm gonna go into this meeting. I'm gonna learn what, what's the secret to all this success here. What's the magic? There's gotta be something that we know and nobody else knows. And we went to that meeting, and I said, I'm going to learn about, I'm going to learn so much about hockey right here. And it was about an hour and a half, and we didn't talk a thing about hockey. It was all about what you were going to be and how you wanted to behave and what you were going to have to do to be a part of it. It was the commitment, the discipline, the understanding of what Hill Murray stood for was what you needed to be to be successful here. All those small lessons that he learned from hockey, it wasn't about the power play. It wasn't about the systems of play. It was the commitment, the dedication, the perseverance. And that was taught by coaches. It was taught by teachers. It was taught by the older players that I got to know. As you talked about earlier, when you come into a situation as a new guy and some of these older players came in and I was intimidated as could be and they welcomed me in and it taught me a lesson just just in that in that moment that as an older guy an experienced guy you don't have to be the loudest guy in the room to be the leader you just have to be able to open yourself up and welcome people in and become that team and become that family and that's really what Hill Marie was all about for me and as I was listening to everyone else speak here, I was doing my best to not even 
do not get emotional about it. That's not really in my nature to get too emotional about some things, but I realized and it reminded me really how much it meant to me. And as I said about the paths going different directions, those lessons and that first meeting that I had here, I relied on that. I leaned on that. It's perseverance. It's understanding that there's others there to help you and you can lean on. They're going to trust you and you can trust them. And it really meant everything to me going down the road dealing with other situations. And when I had the opportunity from Coach Lechner to come back and coach, I was pretty certain I was there was no way I'm going to be able to do this. I even had to push him off a day when I called to call him back because I wasn't sure I wanted to do it. And quite honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen. But I spent some more time thinking about it. And it wasn't the hockey. It was, it was the lessons learned away from here. And I thought, well, we're going to come back and I'm going to make sure if I'm going to do this, that I'm going to pass that along. I'm going to pass that along to every single team that we coach. And I called Coach Lecter back and said, I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but we'll figure it out. And it kind of became a, a slogan for us. I think, well, <laughs> we're just going to, we're going to figure it out. And there was a lot of situations where that, that's the case. But he gave me the, the job every season at the very beginning to talk about what it was to be a Hill Murray hockey player. And what it was is to be part of a Hill Murray community and everything that it stood for and then be a little bit more. Be that leader. Be that person that cares about someone that is maybe into something else. Make sure you bring someone together that maybe is in an uncomfortable situation. And I always made sure that my players, when we started, I said, well, this is obviously a unique situation. This isn't your normal player-coach situation. I'm, I'm well aware of that. And the players would come in, and they would kind of look at me kind of funny, and I'd say, you know, this is my problem, not yours. We'll, we'll figure it out. And I was blessed to have so many players that listened and cared and worked and would come back years later and say that somehow something I had said or something coach had said and something they had learned in our program at Hill Murray had really affected them and helped them along the way. And that was just the most rewarding thing ever. And that just kind of kept bringing me back and bringing me back. And when Coach Lechner called and said, well, you're, you're going to be part of this Hall of Fame. I said, I, I'm not comfortable with the individual recognition or the, or the awards. That's not really what I ever learned about when I was here. It was always part of, part of being the team, part of being, being with that group. But I realized that, you know, it's not really completely an individual award. It's all the people along the way that helped me to grow, to deal with things, welcome me back, allowed and trusted even their kids to come and be part of our program and, and part of our school and let me spend time with them and hopefully they can learn something from us, from me, and from Hill Murray. And that really just made it such a special thing for me when I was hearing everyone speak about it. It really it hit me and I just doing my best not to, to be emotional just sitting there. Because until you live it and experience it and feel it, it's really difficult to explain. And I know for a lot of guys that I've played with that have been teammates of mine and kids that I have coached and parents that I've interacted with, it's something that is so special that I hope everyone always appreciates and doesn't allow it to slip away because it it is a special place, and the things that are taught here and learned really affect someone down the road. I know that for me, you know, it changed my life, and it helped me go a direction that I certainly never would have thought I would have ended up here. But it's with tremendous gratitude to Coach Lechner and to Hill Murray for letting me be a part of it. And I'd, I know everyone's... It's, it's been kind of a long morning, but I wanted to just share one thing with that Coach Lechner and I went through. It was really in the beginning of our career together. 
And we had a, uh, it was a game out in Champlin Park, of all places. It was a January, really not much of a reason for the game. It was a non-conference, not many people in the stands. The team didn't have a whole lot of intensity. And we came into the locker room, and it just so happened that Coach Lechner, not too long before that, had his knee replaced. And he came in, he was still on crutches. So as you can imagine this picture, <laughs> we, we, came in, we came into this locker room. I came in, and we, we, were, we were a bit frustrated with our performance up to that point. And we were kind of giving it to the guys that they needed to pick up the intensity, the energy level, the focus, the whole, all the coach speak that you could give them at that, at that point. And then they're all looking at us, and we're going, you, you guys, when it comes down to the end of the year, it's going to be worth it. It's, going to be, it's all going to be worth it to you. And now you guys you need to pull your bags out of the way. i got to get a wheelchair through, and he's got to go out on his crutches. <laughs> And we got out in the hallway and we looked at each other and said, do you really think they believe that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so, because we're, we're in charge and we're going to find our way out to the bench and out we went. They ended up coming around, but you know, you do the best with what you can. And it was just a, an example of trying to make the best of a situation, I think, and adding in a little bit of humor. And I'm, a lot of time together, it was, it's special. And I just, so many times that I look back and just appreciate our time. And I just really, truly want to say thank you to Hill Murray for everything they've done for me. And I hope that I've been able to give back just a tiny bit of, of what everything they've done for me. And our players and our coaches and our teachers and our administrators, thank you for everything they've done and allowing me to be a part of this. And, I'm so grateful to be in a, with a group of other inductees. It, it just makes it all so special. And uh, thank you to everyone. Thanks. Last but not least, one of our favorites. We're not supposed to have favorites, but we, okay. Uh, 2013 graduate of Hillmarie School. Four years volleyball, two years varsity letter. Senior year, all-conference honorable mention. Four years varsity letter winner in basketball. Participant all four years in the state tournament. Two years state runner-up team, all-conference junior and senior year. Senior year, Miss Basketball nominee. St. Thomas University, four years basketball. Four years participant in the NCAA tournament. Uh, one Final Four, two-time MIAC Player of the Year, two-time First Team All-American, 2017 National Player of the Year, Caitlin langer Simmons. Thank you to all of my other uh, fellow inductees. You guys made it very difficult to go last, so thank you <laughs> for that. <laughs> um, it's an honor to stand here before you today as an inductee into the Hill Murray Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you to the selection committee, my coaches, my teammates, family, friends, and everyone here today to celebrate this incredible class of Hall of Fame inductees. I remember showing up to my first open gym as a freshman getting ready to try out for the basketball team. I was so excited, and that excitement was quickly crushed by getting the wind knocked out of me by 21 Hall of Fame inductee Bethany Doolittle in the very first drill. <laughs> After that, I was mostly terrified. The following week at tryouts, enter Coach Herman. As a freshman, unfamiliar with Herms, I was still terrified. <laughs> well, what I didn't know then is that Herms would become one of my greatest mentors. Herms is the most competitive, humble, caring, and hardworking person you will ever meet. I carry so many of her lessons with me to this day. During my time at Hill Murray, Herms taught me what it means to always carry yourself with class, how to be the hardest worker, 
and to drop the piano and get over there. <laughs> Herms, thank you for being a positive influence in my life for the past 15 years. From time as a player to being a coach on your staff, I'm so grateful for each chapter in our relationship together. So much of my success at the collegiate level was due to my experience and work ethic instilled in me by your mentorship. I hold those memories very close to me and feel incredibly grateful that the foundation laid at Hill Murray allowed me to continue my athletic career at St. Thomas and influence my daily life as a professional, a wife, and a mother. I certainly would not be here today without the teammates I had along the way. I had the unique privilege of going to the state tournament all four years of my high school career. Each team was different and special in its own way. From blowout section final wins my freshman and sophomore year to a triple overtime thriller my senior year, each moment was made special by the people who were in it. I did foul out in the first overtime, but that's an asterisk. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> I'm incredibly grateful for the support of my family. I was lucky to share two years of playing alongside my sister, Sarah. Getting to make those years of memories together will always hold a special place in my heart, even if days at practice ended in verbal disputes on the car rides home. Thank you to my parents. No part of my athletic career was possible without you. Thank you for fostering our love of sports, shooting hoops in the driveway when we were kids, or literally flying across the world to see me compete in Brazil. I can only hope you had half as much fun as I did along the way. Thank you to my husband, David, who was part of so much of my athletic career. Who knew when we were walking around these same hallways that we'd end up here together with a son who already thinks he's a star athlete <laughs> with another one on the way. He mostly just runs into things or chases the dog, but that's okay. <laughs> as I stand here today, more than 10 years since I walked these halls as a student, I'm reminded of the profound values instilled in me by the Hill Murray School community that extend far beyond the basketball court. Resilience, discipline, and teamwork are not just athletic principles, but pillars that have shaped my character and the person that I am today. I am reminded by all the people in this room that this honor is more than a reflection of my hard work, dedication, and passion I poured into my sport. More than that, it is a testament to the support I received from coaches, teammates, my family, the Hill Murray community. Success is best celebrated with those who have helped us along the way, and everyone in this room had a part of that. Thank you for this incredible recognition. I'm proud to be part of Hill Murray Athletics legacy, and I look forward to continuing to support Hill Murray's mission of empowering students to reach their highest potential. Thank you. Congrats, Kate. One backstory, and we'll close. Uh, Caitlin's husband, David, was played for middle school for Mr. Ryan. You've heard a lot of the stories. But I asked Mr. Ryan as an AD one day, I said, so Ryan, you know, no offense, but your track cross country, I've known you since you're a little kid. Um, you don't have a lot of background. Like, what plays do you run, and what do you do in your middle school game? He goes, I just tell the players, give it to David. <laughs> so it was a playbook of one sentence, and they won all the time. In closing, uh, thank you to Judy Schwartz, to Elise uh, Langenfeld, and Katie McNulty. They're back there. Thanks, you guys, for arranging all this. Appreciate it. Uh, I think he might be gone, but to Father John Utech for being our uh, presider today. And then shortly here in a second, we're going to go see, uh, if you see him, say thank you to Chef Paul and the staff from Flick Catering uh, for pre preparing our brunch, which will be ready in seconds here. Uh, most importantly, a heartfelt congratulations to our new six inductees and their families. Uh, you're here forever. There's all your individual plaques are put on a large plaque, separate ones, you get to keep those. And they're up in the field house area to see forever for all the generations to come. It's pretty cool. And there's 13 plaques there. Um, along the walls by the gymnasiums. Uh, thank you for caring so much about Hill Murray School throughout the past, the present, and hopefully well into the future. 
uh, which is represented right here. So very grateful. And with that said, uh, please join us in the comments in the cafeteria for some food and conversation. And uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like until we have to clean up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>